When the first act closes, we understand the anger and frustration that Brian has, that he is flying over a wooded forest, and his two conflicts. The first conflict is his emotional distress at his mother over what he saw her do. He wants to tell his father, but feels it would only make things worse. What he calls the secret seems to have ruined his internal connection with his mother and turned him more towards his father. A plane crash into the wooded forest leaves him alone and with only a hatchet as a tool. Without any kind of knowledge other than bits and pieces he learned on television and at school, he has to learn how to remain alive. We know he is a city boy dropped down into a world never before known to him. By this point, it is obvious that the divorce and getting stranded in the woods are equally important to the story. The second act will follow Brian trying to survive in the forest. It will also determine if he can come to terms with what his mother did and the divorce of his parents. Starting with almost nothing, we'll see how the story Hatchet by Gary Paulson has him progress and build on each new challenge. Hello and welcome to NDM English. My name is Nate and these are my notes. The first scene of the second act starts with the changeover from imagination to reality. Brian had already on a few occasions had to wonder if he was dreaming. He found himself in a strange forest after a very dangerous plane crash that had already taken the life of the pilot. Of course, the pilot had a heart attack that caused the crash, so he was already dead. There is no mother or father to protect him. His friends were safely at home. He had to crawl out of the wreck and swim to an unfamiliar shoreline of a lake all on his own. No matter how real the experience, it was as if it was happening to someone else. He couldn't accept it. Most likely, anyone put into a situation like this would not believe it was real. At this point, there's two choices. Give in to frightening hopelessness and its deadly consequences, or become determined to fight to remain alive. The plot of the story wouldn't go very far if Brian remained sitting at the foot of the tree. Even if his prediction that hungry animals would find and eat him in the night turned out false, he would still end up starving or dying of exposure to the open. Notice that the second act doesn't start with Brian getting up and looking for food or shelter. It starts with him making a decision. An image from the past comes to mind as he thinks about games him and his friend used to play. They'd go into a park and pretend that they were lost. Not only were they safe because it was a child's fantasy, but they would have all kinds of tools to use. One of the most important of those tools would be a match. In his mind, if he could only have a fire, then all would be well. But he doesn't have a match, and knows nothing about how to make a fire without one. Almost nothing about the game of Lost in the Forest he played with his friend is of any help. The only thing that he gets that is useful from that game is the need to find shelter. There's wood all around him, and he has the hatchet that his mother gave him as a gift. He could at least make a lean-to for minimal protection. Luck often shows up in the plot of the story, and Brian recognizes this. He is thrilled to have found a partly scooped out part of the cliff that he can use for shelter. Of course, the hatchet is available to cut wood and make a more protective covering over the mini cave. Without his mother giving him the hatchet, it would have ended up much harder to survive. He shouldn't have even survived the plane crash, but yet here he stood in a forest bruised but not seriously injured. Brian also looks at the other side of luck and questions if that is the right way to describe the current events. Without the secret, there wouldn't be a divorce. Without a divorce, his parents would still be together. If his parents remained together, he probably wouldn't have to take the plane ride to see his father. Taking the plane ride leads to the crash and becoming stranded all alone in this strange forest. Plot continually builds from coincidence to coincidence, but there has to be logic to connect them together. They can't be unconnected events, or it could be hard to believe the story. We might be invested in a boy surviving in the forest, but how he got there in the first place shouldn't be left out. Knowing why he was in the plane and how it crashed helps to establish the storyline and what to expect. That he is a boy who just crashed and ended up with a hatchet in the middle of nowhere without leading up to that can be confusing. Not that it wouldn't make for a good story, but it would be a different story. It could be a mystery slowly unfolding about who the boy is and how exactly he ended up in the forest. Even if that was the story told, the same rules of plot would still apply. There is always cause and effect that builds up the plot and leads towards a final outcome. One event leads to another, and those might lead to something entirely different. A good plot builds complications as the character strives to overcome obstacles. 
They might find a solution to one problem and end up with greater problems, or at least a new one. In Hatchet, Brian is always finding new goals as he discovers how to deal with each challenge when they develop. His first two problems of thirst and shelter ended up rather easy to overcome. The cliff, next to where he climbed out of the water and onto dry land, was used as a shelter. He was already next to a lake when he needed to quench his thirst. This gave him plenty of water to drink. Despite the amount of water, there was still the dilemma he had to face. The water might be clean enough for him, but it might also be filled with disease. He could choose hoping to find a better water supply and run the risk of dehydration. On the other hand, he could take a drink and hope that he wouldn't get sick. Both scenarios offered deadly consequences, so he had to decide which one was the least dangerous compared to his needs. The story could go either direction, and that is what makes the plot interesting. Maybe him getting sick leads to finding a cure, but it might not make as much sense. He wouldn't know enough about plants and medicine to end up living. In that case, he could wander off and discover a running stream. The same dilemma of not knowing how clean the water is would still exist. Besides, he might wander off in search of water and end up lost and without shelter. Brian decides to take the chance of drinking the water he already has, quenching his thirst. This leads to a realization that he was hungry. The next step in the plot is finding food. The search for food makes his life even harder. As was stated, a plot will include one solution and create another. This pattern can be seen throughout the story. Brian wants to make things simple and indeed he takes one step at a time. However, no matter how slowly he takes things, there's always a huge complication that threatens to make his situation worse. The first real breakthrough that ensures he will live is finding some berries to eat. That should have been the final salvation as a person alone in the wilderness. It turns out that filling his belly with those berries causes its own problems. Next morning, he's extremely sick and the berries basically lose his dinner. Although the berries don't turn out to be deadly, he does need to learn how to control his eating habits. More importantly, he recognizes that he has to find a new food source. It also brings back emotional memories equally as painful. When he first wakes up from the stomach ache, he calls out for his mother. Once purged of the offending berries, he starts to remember details of the secret he witnessed. He goes into detail about watching his mother kiss a stranger. There might not be an actual relationship between the two conflicts of hunger and the secret, but they are both connected by pain. The memory is filled with strong emotions as painful to his heart as the berries to his stomach. The more Brian finds solutions, the greater his goals. As his list of food items grows, so does Brian's confidence. He can't eat the gut berries that make him sick without finding other sources of food. No matter how careful he might be picking the best of the berries, they will not keep him alive. The next stage is to find better berries. That presents a problem similar to the drinking water. He can't go very far from the lake and his shelter. He could either get lost or he misses a search party that flies over the lake. Within a few days, he finds a raspberry bush that is in a clearing made from knocked down trees from the wind. When he starts eating the berries, there is a bear eating alone with him. As should be expected, that makes him very afraid. It could easily attack him and kill him. Yet, it doesn't. The deadly crisis is averted. The incident is more than a quick moment of suspense. It is a reminder that no matter how easy things can get, there is always a danger lurking nearby. One night, he wakes up upon hearing an animal climbing in and out of the water. Had he heard this earlier, Brian might have feared to move in case of danger. Instead of ignoring it and fearing for his safety, he becomes curious and investigates. Before long, he finds eggs and only hesitates a short time before using them as food. He has learned from his berry experience and doesn't eat them all at once. Patience, not giving in to hunger, shows that he has grown as a person and gained a little survival wisdom. Nature, rather than memories of television and school, started to teach him skills. A bluebird caught a fish from the lake. He spends a lot of time making a spear and learning how to fish. Trial and error eventually gives him the results that he needs for new food. Once he caught fish and ate them, he thought of the other animals available for food. He had become more aware of the sights and sounds of his surroundings. The plot was developing a city boy into a clever woodsman. Hints are placed in the plot to prepare for future events. Take the bear, for example. Bears are dangerous animals. Perhaps a bear will not be encountered again, but there will be other animals. It is enough for Brian to be reminded that he has a hatchet for protection. He'll need that for help in getting ready when another animal finds him. 
Eventually, at one point, a porcupine enters his shelter and hurts Brian's leg. In fear and frustration, he hurls the hatchet at the intruder like he planned to do with the bear. This makes sparks fly when hitting the hard rocks. The next morning, after a series of dreams, he realizes how to make fire by using the hatchet. There are other hints throughout the story as well. His daydreaming about playing lost in the woods with his friends introduces the idea Brian doesn't take things seriously. His having to deal with that truth will come up later when something makes him lose hope of rescue. Trees blown down with a very strong force of wind when he finds the raspberries introduces the possibility of bad weather. That plot point will be talked about in another episode. Descriptions that seem a small part of one plot point can become more important later. When it seemed the story was going smoothly and with some prediction, an airplane overhead increases the conflict. This is the halfway point of the story when the plot takes a drastic turn. Brian has assumed that after all this time, he would be rescued. His main goal was to survive long enough to last until found and return home. The scene starts like many others where he is trying to achieve a small goal. This goal was making a spear to catch fish, and after that, hunt for some small birds he noticed were abundant. Above his head, he heard a plane fly when he wasn't near his usual sheltered area. Once he heard the plane, he dropped what he was doing and tried desperately to make contact. Unfortunately, he was not seen and the plane disappeared slowly on the horizon. Rescue wasn't going to be today, and this got him thinking that perhaps it never would. The plane was gone, the spear was gone, his family was gone, and most of all, hope was gone. For one night, Brian gave up and almost killed himself. This caused, by the next morning, a complete change in attitude. He was transforming. He would no longer treat this as a game, but seriously consider living here for a very long time, however long that was going to be. There was a different hope, or as he called it, a tough hope, as his knowledge by experience replaced his old knowledge. He watched wolves walk by and recognized them as part of the woods. They watched him and continually walked, almost as if Brian has finally become part of nature along with them. Mistakes can cost him dearly, but they can also present him with new information. He wasn't out of danger. With the new vision of why he needed to survive, he paid more attention to detail. A skunk stealing his precious turtle eggs taught him the most important lesson of all. Instead of getting angry and frustrated, he learned from the skunk's tenacity. The need for food was primary. Without eating, shelter and fire would be useless. He built a stronger shelter, a natural cage for fish, and a food storage space to prepare for the future. The greatest achievement was learning how to successfully hunt and cook the chicken-like birds found all over. They would keep him alive and more than any other food source. He considered them his first real meat and the best tasting wilderness meal. With a new perspective, strong shelter, and plenty of food for now, the second act of the plot comes to a close on a high note. Question for discussion. How does using the knowledge he used before the crash and the knowledge gained while alone in the forest influence the plot events? Click the subscribe button and notification bell to not miss the next installments and analysis.